Look at this chocolate. Look at this chocolate. Hello everybody and welcome slash welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Adriana and today, as you can see by the title, I am going to give off a few tips that you could use as a new YouTuber. Some of the best tips that I've used for myself to become a more successful YouTuber and tricks that I've learned from other YouTubers as well. Y'all, please be patient with me and my hair. My contacts were slipping. I couldn't even tell how messy my hair looked. But anyway, carry on. I think these are going to be some good tips for anybody that's just getting started with YouTube, wanting to see what the situation is all about dipping their toes in the water, uh, filling out the situation, because some of these tips that some of these big YouTubers are telling you, I don't know. I think somebody's trying else? to set me up. Anyhow, so the first tip is to work with what you have. Obviously, once you get started with YouTube and you're watching other people's videos and you see that their camera quality is crisp, you're like, oh my gosh, what eyeball did you record that with? Or, you know, some of them have microphones, studio lights, ring lights, all these things. Yes, that will definitely increase the quality of your YouTube videos, which I do recommend uh, further down the line. But first of all, you definitely have to see if it's something that you want to do. So start off with what you have. And honestly, some of the best YouTube videos and even some content here on my channel is made with a YouTube an iPhone or just a phone, any phone that you have. Some phones are way better than expensive cameras that you buy. Currently I'm filming with a Canon, Canon SX40 HS, which I got in high school. At the time I was like, oh my gosh, I got a DSLR. It is not a DSLR, but it is a nice, affordable, user-friendly camera. Um, to this day, it is better than my Nikon that I have, a Nikon DSLR. I will put a few clips here. You can see the difference between my Nikon, my Canon, and my iPhone. Clearly the iPhone's a little bit better. Don't get bamboozled into buying a $600 camera just to find out that your iPhone or your Samsung does it way better. There are so many tips and tricks and DIY videos on YouTube on how to make some of these tools like ring lights. By using what you have in the beginning, at least you get to gauge how much you're invested in YouTube and how much you're willing to invest in YouTube. There'd be nothing worse than spending a couple of hundreds of dollars on YouTube and you realizing it's just not something that you want to do. At the same time, I will say that once you do realize it's something that you really want to do and you finally go ahead and make that you know financial investment on a nice camera or a tripod then you're just more motivated to make sure that your content is the best and you're making sure that you're getting your money's worth out of all that money that you spend what I'm trying to say is don't rush to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on uh, equipment to film your YouTube videos some of the best stuff that can help your video quality you already have at home. Makeshift tripods, use your iPhone, use your iPhone as a microphone as well. This is a trick that I actually use myself when I'm recording voiceovers. Honestly, it has convinced me that I don't need to buy a microphone yet. My second tip, document your ideas. I get some of the best ideas, whether it's for a blog post or a YouTube video, when I'm out and about or even right about to sleep. Make sure you take the time to actually document your ideas. When you're caught off guard and all of those good ideas come to your head, that's definitely when you want to take note of them because they're so fresh, they're vibrant, you have so many ideas. I used to definitely tell myself, like, oh, I'll remember what I was thinking tomorrow, and it's just not as juicy anymore, I'm not as excited about it. Kind of like when you plan an outfit in your head and then you try it on and you're like, oh, that's what it looks like. Take notes, especially if you're anything like me and all you do is ramble and talk, talk, talk. Notes are definitely super important to just keep you on track, especially when you have a really good idea, you wanna write it down, make sure you never lose it so that the point can just really hit. <clears throat> and another point in regards to documenting your ideas, Oh my god, I thought that was my stomach. There's a motorcycle outside. Ever since going vegan, my stomach has been growling a lot because I'm just more hungry. Honestly, the sound of that motorcycle could have been my stomach. In regards to documenting your thought processes, don't just record the videos that you think are done the most. For that reason, that niche, which I'm going to talk about soon, is super saturated and you want to make sure that you stand out. I'm not saying because reaction videos are super saturated, you don't want to do that. Do them. If you have an idea that in your heart you feel like it's going to be a really good video, there is an audience for everything out there. Like, whoever would have thought that watching people eat would be so popular as it is now, or watching people talk into microphones or 
comb their hair into a microphone. So don't suppress yourself thinking that, you know, I've never seen a video like this, I'm not gonna post it. Your video could be the one to pop off. That weird idea that you had in your mind but you're too scared to post it, post it. Number three, solidify what your niche is. So basically what a niche is, specialized or focused area of a specific market. Food videos, for example, that branches out into different niches of mukbangs, uh, recipe videos, food hacks, all that type of stuff. Making sure that you know what your niche is so that you can attract the type of people that would want to see your content is super duper important. I'm not just saying to, you know, make one type of video. Don't be too much of the jack of all trades in a sense where if somebody asked you what your channel was about, you really would not have anything to say. If you have an elevator pitch about what type of content you create, if you know that you can solidify that and confidently solidify that, then that will definitely attract the type of people that you want uh, engaging in your video which I have found to be a lot easier with the help of tags, marketing, promotion on all types of social media. There's so many ways to do it. For example, after I posted my eating vegan 24 hour video, like I said in the video, I wanted to continue to be vegan and I have. It's been almost a month now. After that, I just started looking into vegan blogs, I looked into vegan Facebook pages, and those would be great places that other people want to share ideas, they want to know other recipes, they want to be creative in the kitchen. Those would be really good places to market yourself, just genuinely trying to share some information that you have. And, you know, people will see that. They'll see, okay, Adriana has made a video and she really does genuinely want to share this with me, talk about it some more. That is the best place to get, not just subscribers, because you want people that you interact with as well. So just making sure that that relationship is reciprocal, people will see See that and want to continue to engage with you and want to stay for the long haul so like you know if you feel like that's what you and I have and you haven't subscribed yet then I think we should take this relationship to the next that's just my opinion I think we should take this relationship to the next step if you're not there yet that's okay Number four, get familiar with YouTube's algorithm and analytics. Take the time to actually look at the numbers that you're producing with your YouTube videos and see what different changes are, you know, impacting those numbers. It is important to study your growth and understand what works best for your channel and what will continue to help it grow. Something that worked for Jackie Ina might not work for me, something that worked for this YouTuber just might not work for me and something that worked for me might not work for them. It's not a one shoe fits all situation, but that's okay. Just keep implementing changes and each time just see what was different this time and what made it work that I didn't have in this last video. Once you start to notice the changes that are making your channel really grow, um, in a positive way. What, what other type of growth is there? In negative growth? So once you start to see what changes that you've implemented are really increasing the growth on your channel and the traffic, whether it's your thumbnails and how they look, the way you title your videos, whether it's all caps or lowercase, or the hashtags that you're using, make sure you're taking note and implementing that or removing that the next time you make a video and you will really see the difference. And you'll see that the traction and the trajectory that your channel is growing at like you never would have expected it. I posted a video once and I was just so surprised at how fast it was growing compared to the other ones. And I did that with, there's a lot of tools, T-wills, there's a lot of tools out there, a lot of free ones especially, that you can use to, you know, study the growth of your YouTube channel. The one that I use specifically is called TubeBuddy. Um, I will add a link in the description. Uh, it's free. If you want to sign up, you could use my link. You could see your analytics. You could see what types of things that you're not implementing on your channel enough. Some of the best growth tools that they have, for example, the tags that you use for your search engine optimization or SEO. One of the first times that I really implemented some serious SEO and stopped using one word tags in my YouTube descriptions was my get to know me tag. And I believe if you type the get to know me tag 2020, I'd be the first video to pop up. And I made sure to use tags that I would want to find in other people's videos and, you know, just hope to God that other people are looking for those tags and luckily it has been working for me. So I'm going to continue. Quick mobile tools like YouTube Studio, obviously a free one that is straight up from the YouTube app. It allows me to quickly view my stats along with that and another free app that is unfortunately only for iPhones called YouTube Tracker. I would say not to obsess over your growth. You're not focusing on the right things anymore. Instead of focusing on the content you should be producing, you're focusing on your numbers and why things drop. It's normal that's what happens not everything is going to be as smooth as you expected it to you're not gonna be from 0 to 100 as soon as you thought it would be it takes time it takes effort but you can't obsess over it V5 fo and fum upstairs like sheesh I feel like in every video I complain about somebody making noise <sighs> number five 
build cohesion on your channel along with you know sticking to a niche that works best for you also stick with a visual style that works for you and that you like you're attracted to that will attract other people as well so what i mean by creating cohesion in your visual styles i'm talking about the thumbnails that you're making and just the way that you edit your videos creating an editing style definitely takes some time especially if you're still learning how to edit but i do recommend just learning from people on YouTube there are so many free resources online for example Final Cut Pro or iMovie or whatever editing software that you're using there's so many different tutorials online I know whenever I have free time I study on how to just add special effects even if it's not something that I would ever use I will use some of those tools very helpful and I've actually learned how to do things myself for example these two vectors I created them myself using Keynote and uh, Final Cut Pro and somewhere down the line I will create a video on a tutorial or something like that because I know how helpful it is for me. Look at other people's videos, what type of editing styles do you like, learn from other people and tweak it to your liking is what I'm trying to say. I recently went in and changed a majority of my thumbnails so that you know my channel could look cleaner and more cohesive and intentional. This is what most of my thumbnails looked like a few weeks ago and I've changed them since to these visually when you're on my channel I know when I go to other people's channels the one thing that I'm impressed by is their thumbnails like they're not so different that you're like alright are these five different people that made these videos if you were looking through your subscribed homepage and you weren't just looking at the names you're looking at the thumbnails because that's what people do and you see that font and that style you're going to know it's my video it's the thumbnail that draws us in it's not necessary to make them look cohesive in a sense that you know that there's a theme as you continue to grow your channel to just make your thumbnails in a way that are familiar to you and your viewers also makes them want to watch the video and click it immediately so don't underestimate the power of visuals in regards to your thumbnail or your editing style because it does play a huge part everything is free around here okay I'm a budget queen I use all free apps I use Canva and PixArt. I even use it when I'm posting my regular Instagram pictures, which you can follow here at adriana.ofsaints. So some tips I will have for anybody looking to make their first thumbnail or, you know, just taking any tips that you can from me about making a thumbnail, I would say avoid colors that blend in when with an... With, whoa, 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 did I just have a stroke? I just have a stroke. Avoid colors that blend in with one another. You know, I want to be able to read what it is that you're saying. Have big font, big enough that I could read it, but you know, I still want to see what the subject of the video is. So if it's gonna be you in the video, leave some space on the side of the thumbnail where you could have text. So just be aware of those little things. As much as you can, try to avoid having blurry pictures in your thumbnail. If your intent is for me to see something in the thumbnail, and the last but most important tip that I still need to work on as well is make the type of content that you want to see. When you're editing your videos or even sitting in front of your camera, something that you need to think about is, if I were watching my own video, would I subscribe? That's something that you have to ask yourself all the time. When you're sitting in front of the camera, sometimes you think like, Oof, I'm killing it. Like, I really am killing it. And then you like watch it and you're just like, mm -hmm. So it's definitely hard to, you know, stay focused on the material that you're providing. It's something that you definitely have to work on. Every video will get better, but just make sure that the energy that you're giving is the energy that you would want from somebody else if you were, you know, to subscribe to their channel. I feel like this one's a tough one because we're so much more critical of our own work than we are of other people's work. So I watch my own videos and I'm like, oh my god, I hate this. I'm so boring. I sound like a robot. The nice comments that I get from you all really do reassure me that, okay, you know what? I do have a good personality. Um, but at the same time, there's always room for improvement. If you see that you're a little bit dry sometimes, you know, just before you start filming, just remind yourself that, you know, you're a queen, you're a king. And just bring that energy. I'm not saying put on a persona, but you know, just, just hype yourself up. Be your own hype man. But luckily for this point that I'm making, every single video that you post is a new opportunity for you to make a you know, good or lasting first impression to anybody that's not already subscribed to you. For example, anybody who's already subscribed to me already know how I am. You've seen me grow. You've seen me you know, be a different person in every single video. But somebody who's watching me for the first time, you know, this is their opportunity to see if they really vibe with my energy. So um, don't be too hard on yourself thinking that all your videos are boring or 
etc etc honestly maybe this is just for me maybe nobody else definitely give yourself the benefit of the doubt knowing that every single video that you post is a brand new opportunity for you to make a good connection with a few subscribers so that's all I have for today I really hope you enjoyed that video and you picked up some new tips that you can implement in your YouTube channel if you're a new youtuber let me know this is a safe space for you know small youtubers to connect which is a super great tool honestly should have mentioned that but maybe I'll do like an updated video once I reach 10,000 subscribers in Jesus name mm. tap into that tap into that leave me a comment below if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up a comment and of course subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I post another video and I'll see you in the next one